Montgomery Ward was an institution for over a century. Started in 1872 by Aaron Montgomery Ward in Chicago, the business began as a mail-order catalog that offered thousands of items. The catalog rivaled Sears, and they would both fight for market dominance over the next few decades. During the late 1920s, Montgomery Wards began to open retail outlets, and they began popping up quickly. Within four years, they had over 500 stores. Montgomery Ward was one of the giant retailers of the 20th century, but they struggled to maintain their size. Through the years, they were bought, merged with, and sold. At one point during the 1970s, you could find stores called Jefferson Ward. This came from a merger with a chain of stores out of Miami. You may also remember Electric Avenue, which was their attempt to specialize in electronics. By 1985, Montgomery Ward had closed their catalog business, and by June of 2001, all of the remaining retail locations were also closed. Another giant in Chicago shopping was Marshall Fields. Following the Great Fire in 1871, Marshall Field & Company was established. They became the premier store in Chicago with their large flagship store located on State Street. Through the first half of the 20th century, they had steady growth. They had revenue totaling $225 million by 1951, and by the 1960s and 70s, they began to push their way into the suburban shopping malls that were becoming popular. But Fields began to lose their regal feeling that set them apart from other department stores. Through the 1980s and 1990s, they bounced from the British American Tobacco Company to the Dayton Hudson Corporation, and then finally settled with the parent company of Macy's in 2005. For many, Marshall Fields was best known for their Christmas traditions at the historic Chicago store. The decorated windows that lined the building and a stop at the Walnut Room were all you needed to get into the spirit. Unfortunately, in 2006, the remaining Marshall Fields stores, including their flagship store, were rebranded as Macy's. Kmart was a new concept developed by the five and dime chain Kresge's to be a large discount department store. The very first Kmart opened in Garden City, Michigan in 1962, six months before Walmart opened their first store. The next few decades saw large discount stores explode, and Kmart reaped the benefits. In 1977, Kresge officially changed their name to Kmart, and by 1981 they had over 2,000 stores located coast to coast. Famous for their blue light special promotion, Kmart became a retail giant with sales peaking in 1992. The following years saw competition increase and sales decrease, but Kmart still had successful brand deals with the likes of Martha Stewart, Jacqueline Smith, and Kathy Ireland. Sales, however, were falling and stores were closing, and a bankruptcy in 2002 led to the merger with Sears. The two struggling companies propped each other up for the next decade before a second bankruptcy filing. As of today, there are still a handful of stores remaining, but for most of us, Kmart is a fading memory. Opened in 1960, Service Merchandise was the brainchild of Harry and Mary Zimmerman of Nashville, Tennessee. Their experience with five and dime stores, and later wholesaling, led them to create a catalog showroom. The store had a range of products from jewelry and housewares to sporting goods and clothing. Customers could shop and pick out an item, and an associate would retrieve it for them from the back of the store. The process was later computerized, and products would be delivered on a conveyor belt from the stockroom. Service Merchandise was the leading catalog showroom during the 1980s, and they also were big sponsors of game shows like Wheel of Fortune and The Price is Right. At its peak, they were located in 37 states and did over $4 billion in sales. Their profits began to slip with the rise of Walmart, Bed Bath & Beyond, and Best Buy. The company began to discontinue unsuccessful product lines, stores were converted to a more traditional shopping experience, and the catalog side of the business was abandoned altogether. By 2002, service merchandise was no more. After filing for bankruptcy and liquidating all of their assets, the store officially closed their doors. Caldor was a Northeast department store that was started by Carl and Dorothy Bennett in 1951. The name was a mashup of their first names, and the first location opened in a small second-floor location in Port Chester, New York. 
They sold toys, housewares, luggage, and gifts from name brand suppliers. The company slowly grew, expanding to four locations by 1961, and by the end of the 1970s, they were up to 56 stores. Carl and Dorothy took small steps and grew their business, despite a recession during the 1970s. Caldor was different. They offered high-quality goods and backed it up with a generous return policy. This made them very attractive to other companies. So in 1981, they were purchased for $313 million by Associated Dry Goods. Carl stayed on with the company until his retirement in 1985, and everyone felt like he was the reason they were so successful. Immediately, things got shaky. Sales at Caldor were slipping, and by the 1990s, Caldor was filing for bankruptcy. 1999 was their final year in business, ending a 48-year run. Sears, the largest retailer in the United States during the 1980s, began in Chicago in 1892. The company started as a catalog company that offered everything a farm household could ever want. This focus on rural America drove Sears and Roebuck's growth and propelled them into a brick-and-mortar store by 1925. It was in the early 1930s that they released their famed Christmas Wish Book, which became a staple in almost every household, as kids would circle in dog-ear pages and dream about Christmas morning. Not only was the company busy opening hundreds of locations, but they also diversified by buying other businesses, and they also started Allstate Insurance and the Discover credit card during the 1980s. Just like many of the companies mentioned here, Sears declined dramatically during the 1990s. Poor management and pressures from discount retailers made profits fall. When Kmart bought Sears in 2004, both companies were trying to get back to being profitable, but their efforts just led to more stores closing and many of their brands being sold to competitors. The once great American company has been reduced to just a few stores, and although they are not completely gone, time is running out. Mervyn Morris first opened his namesake store, Mervyn's, in 1949 near Oakland, California, and it grew across the Bay Area, and soon it could be found along the entire West Coast. Mervyn's sold clothing, bedding, furniture, jewelry, and housewares, among other things, and they were often found at shopping malls. By 1977, Mervyn's had 42 stores, and the next year, the Dayton Hudson Company, also known as Target, purchased the company. The 1980s and 1990s saw Mervyn's moving into other states, but as they grew, so did their sister company, Target. They were competing for the same customer, so by 2004, Target was looking to sell Mervyn's. Immediately after selling the company to an investment firm, stores began to close. Within two years, Half of their stores had closed, and everything else was being liquidated as bankruptcy loomed. In 2009, during the midst of the housing recession, there was no chance for the company to recover, and remaining stores closed that year. J.L. Hudson founded Hudson's Department Store in Detroit, Michigan in 1881. What began as a store on the ground floor of the Detroit Opera House grew to be the tallest department store in the world. Following the building of the new flagship store on Woodward Avenue, Hudson, along with his nephews, grew the business to become the place to go in Detroit. The store was enormous, and it was the epicenter of much of what went on downtown. During the 1950s, Hudson looked to open new locations in newly developed shopping malls around the region. By the 1960s, the Dayton Company out of Minneapolis bought Hudson's and together they became the Dayton Hudson Company. It wasn't long after that that Detroit began to suffer economic hardships and Hudson's started to decline too. By 1983, their downtown store had closed and would later be imploded to make way for new development. It wasn't until 2001 that the remaining Hudson stores closed for good, as they were rebranded to Marshall Fields and later to Macy's. If you enjoyed this video, click on this playlist to watch even more. And as always, thank you so much for watching.